<laughs> What's going on, my brother? Go on, go on, you good? Yeah. I got a fact for you. Go on, straight off the bat. Go on. Did you know that Jamaica has 120 rivers? <laughs> but what's the most important river? River Nile. No, Dunn's River, man. No, no. Where you yeah, get the food, me. you know your, your I beans. know, I know, don't tell me. You know about Dunn's River? Do you know about Dunn's River? Do you know about Dunn's River? Have you walked up Dunn's River? I have walked up Dunn's River. Yeah. 2012. Jeez, yeah, I climbed it. Well, you climb it, really. Oh, really? Is it? It's the proper things. Not as no, no, some now tourist it's... thing. I was there when it was rough. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't want to be around it when it's rough. Yardies on the sideline. Welcome to Take A Bow, guys. This is the funniest show on the internet. I've said it. Thank you for tuning in. It's me, Craig Mitch, Steve-O, the madman. We're here to talk football. Um... Did you watch the Conor McGregor and yes. Khabib Nurmagomedov? I just never say his last name. Well, I'm gonna try it, um, bro. It was worth the wait. And everything what happened, I knew would happen. Conor's rubbish on the ground. But I was just hoping that he would stay up. And did you, you was hoping that he just maybe knocked him out or something? Yeah, or? I was hoping. Um, I'm going on England duty this week. Yes. Yeah, what do you mean? International break. Is it? Yeah. Who we got? Uh, we got Croatia and Spain away. That's hard games, bro. Croatia's behind closed doors. Who's Jamaica? Why? They did something. Who's Jamaica got? <laughs> Listen, we're going with the comments. Um, Paul Papula said, you guys are very entertaining. You almost make my Tuesdays fun. Is that a dick? I don't know, maybe, maybe that person has wow. very depressive Tuesdays. I was Tuesdays. just gonna say. Wow, oh, man, I would. If we could get that little bit with that extra 20% to make them fun, then we'll try. Or tune into me on my own. <laughs> <laughs> JD Bomb said, what a name said, surely Benteke gets the award for the square head and manager award goes to Big Sam with a Spartan. By the Sam. way, JD Bomb is my one of my top Spartans. Is it yeah. a girl? Yeah. Nice. Hi, Jay. Do you wanna? Oh, come on, bro. Uh, Mohammed Mohammed, what a name, said, challenge time song was poor from Mitch, but Steve-O saved it and only sang for a second legend. Definitely hasn't got one of your hats at home. Definitely doesn't play your app. Definitely not a Spartan. Well, thank me, Mitch. That's all you got to do. Now, thanks for saving me. Uh, Zenitis Mihan Lauren said, uh, Craig's trim is bare fine. You're done, though. <laughs> You're done, though. <laughs> See? My, my ones are like, whoa, you saved the song. Mitch, you got good hair. What's wrong with that? You're done, though, innit? He said you're done, though. You're the done, the you're Michel done River. The Michelin men. All right. Well, that's your guys. I'll just give your guys a name. The Michelin men. He's dead. Tires. <laughs> you trying to say I'm tired? Uh, J2 or Jim. James Borman, I know Jim, I see you on Twitter all the time. If Kane doesn't score for Tottenham in the big games, then they will come unstuck. Mitch, who does he support? West Ham, innit? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm not talking oh. about your team. Uh, Bree 10 said, all that dedication and Kane still couldn't square it to Sterling. Are they still going on about that? What? In the World Cup. What? Can't find my glasses, said. Mitch, your argument for Hazard is poor and you know it. Hazard has the best this season. And last season, one of the best shot to goal ratios. You punk. Wow. He, didn't, he didn't say you I punk. Was say. He didn't, but was he the best last season? No. Because he said last Bruyne, season. Salah. Yeah, no, nah, he wasn't the best last season, Silver, man. Sterling, Starne, all better than him. Uh, Mr. 10 out of 10 said, uh, so Alex Ferguson and Mourinho have my respect for each other. Him being the director of football at Man U is what is saving Mourinho his job. Nope. Don't know how that works, but okay, thanks for that. And uh, White Eagle 456 said, Is it Harry Kuehl for the Aussie with the most UEFA Champions League appearances? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> no, of course it is. I right, just go in with the first post, and it comes from School of Football. And once again, I always say it every couple of weeks, but I'm going to say it again. Thank you, whoever saved School from from administration. It means a lot, man. I appreciate that account. Oh, was it? Richard, Richard yeah. Yeah. Of course, with, with Rich in his name, he puts the Rich in Richard. I get you. Liverpool have not lost to Man City at Anfield since May 2003. Well, we finally got one again. You ready? www.ddwdddwdwdwdwdwdwdwdwdwdwd. You added a D in there. Uh. Why did he take the ball off Jesus? Why did Jesus let him take the ball? Because he's 20, he's a kid. Matter, bro. He's, he's obviously not starting, so maybe he's a bit short of confidence at the moment. Can I say one thing? Did you know, did you hear when Pep said he didn't even know that he had missed three of his last five? That's poor, isn't it? That's terrible. Like, as the gaffer. Yeah. Should you even admit that? No. But that you ain't been doing things. your homework. So you can admit it if you're if you're being totally real and you know you usually get everything right and you've made this one mistake. Then it's like, oh bloody hell, really? I didn't, didn't clock. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm giving him that benefit, but it's but still poor. I think he's lying because he said it was his decision. 
to let Mares take the penalty and not Jesus. I think he's lying to spare their blushes. I think okay. he's absorbing the blame. I think really Jesus picked up the ball and Mares said, no, nah, mate, I want to take it. And it was a little bit of a thing. And then obviously when they asked him after the game, he said, no, no, it was me, it was me. I just think he's been a good gaffer and taking yeah. the blame. And we all know if Aguero was on the field, not only is he taking the penalty, Scoring. he's tucking the penalty. Yeah. And that's that. So he can take blame for that. The fact that he took Aguero from the 65th minute. What was that about? Just freshen it up. Man City, also, Man City also should have had two pens before that. So there was the one where Jesus absolutely destroyed Lovren. He did that step over and then flicked it through his legs, ran past legs, him yeah. and then he just slapped him in the face. I don't. Sorry, what? I don't think it's a pen. Bro, he, he, he like scraped him like this after he destroyed him. Yeah, but arms do come up. Now, if Jesus was next to him more, yeah. he would have got him there. Iron bar is what I do, it's my favourite part of football. Giving people iron bar. Well, there was another penalty incident that I can't remember, but I'm sure some people can. And uh, I feel like Man City should have had two penalties, but it doesn't matter because they got the third penalty and Mara's missed it. Now, let me ask you something. You haven't won there since 2003, made mm -hmm. to be precise. Your teammate takes the penalty, blazes it over the bar. Are you not speaking to him for a week? Are you angry though, if with your teammate, if he misses that no. and you don't take the three points? No. I'll tell you when I was angry. So we was in the playoff final against Canvey Island. I was playing for Redbridge. Um, a guy called Billy um, took a penalty, but he took it, he had his socks down, shin pads off, like it was just all laxy daisy, mm. blasted it over exactly like Mares did. That annoyed me. Because yeah. yeah, he was just like, strolled up to it, you know what I mean? There wasn't no uh, urgency, you know what I mean? So, but with Mares, unlucky man. It happens, it does happen. Yeah, but. And these are the margins we look at the end of the season. If Man City don't win the league and you kind of t tee up the away games where you could have, where you, they, if he scores, let's be real, they probably got three points. Yeah. And then you look at it and go, say they miss out on the league by like a point or two. You go, mm, Liverpool, we had a penalty at Anfield. You will look back, some will, but brother, I think Liverpool are going to miss penalties during the season. Will the fans forgive him? Yes. Because he hasn't, he's not. He's not like Aguero, he's been there for seven no, years and he's done him, a lot. He's been here for about might, a month. It might mess him up. Anyway, we're going to come away from that and we're going to talk about the tactical battle between these two teams because Dave reckons that it was a boring game. Because I think it was both, a terrible game. Well, this is the thing though. It depends how you look at it because obviously as a spectacle, entertainment was quite boring. Mm -hmm. But if you're a budding coach and you're into that side of the game, this was a masterclass. This was chess, bro. If you saw the way they lined up and the way they... This was like two managers that really knew the margin for error was tiny. They really set up in a way to kind of, they, there was a lot of respect shown, which was a bit annoying, but this was top level tactics. If you're a budding coach that likes boring football, then yes, watch that game yesterday. If you're a Listen, budding coach that believes that attack is the best line of defense, no, because, then you wouldn't have been wanting to No, 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 that. because these are two teams that will probably, 36 out of the 38 games will play attacking football. It's just they've come up against each other and they realize a point may not be the worst thing here, it may not be the worst because we know we can get three points the following week. Let's be let's be smart about this and let's not lose. Three. What did Man City lose to Liverpool at Anfield last year? Was it three, four. three, four? Now they got a point and they should have had three, so that's progress. But bro, the tactics had nothing to do with when the ball comes up to Sterling, giving it away. When the ball comes up to Aguero, giving it away. That's yeah. nothing to do with tactics. Yeah, but those are the things players, that don't happen. The individual players, Salah getting through on goal, blasting it over. The, it was terrible. Yeah, that was poor, that side of it. All of it, that's the no, individual No, but players. I'm talking about the fact that like, usually Man City, you see Mendy basically as a winger. This time he was like sitting back. Yeah. Every time Liverpool got the ball, they couldn't counter because there was that bank of four there. It just came out of nowhere every time they got the ball because yeah. they didn't want to let them get through behind. They were, I thought there was good tactics on display, but as an entertainment spectacle, yeah, it, was, it was, especially when you saw like Liverpool, Chelsea the week before. Can I say though, Guardiola, going back to what you said about um, after the game, Guardiola talking, it's good that a manager does still protect their players. Not like Moyes, not like Mourinho. Mourinho killed his, his, his club this whole this weekend, with what he was saying about uh, the young boys, you know what I mean? Yeah, but then once again, Steve-O, I have to <laughs> say, it depends what you want from your manager. Because mm. I like the truth. Do you want to be lied to? Ignorance is bliss. What do you want? Because for me, when I look at Mourinho, even though it does disrupt the team a bit, at least you know what's going on over there. There's no lies. You know my manager, 
My manager told me that our stadium would be ready. But guess what, it's not ready. My manager said he was happy that we hadn't made any signings, but we got five injuries and we're struggling. I don't wanna hear it. Don't lie to me, just be real, be transparent, and we don't have a problem. All right, let's move on to the next post anyway. So we'll from that. a dead game of football to a very exciting game of football, I have to say, Arsenal have tweeted a nice little cute graphic that they made on paint. Ooh. And they put, you ready for it? www waking up this morning on cloud nine. I think it's waking up this morning on cloud nine. Arsenal have won nine games in a row in all competitions. They haven't done that since 2015. Their next four fixtures, Leicester at home, Sporting away, Crystal Palace away, Blackpool at home. Who's Sporting? Sporting Lisbon? Yeah, Europa. Do you reckon they can make it 13? Yeah. Well, they can. Do you think they will make it 13? Yes. They're doing their team. They're going to win the league. Huh? They're going to win the league. You, are you okay? Do you need a thermometer or? No, I think they're going to win the league. The way they're playing and the way they look and the way they're dispatching all the other small teams, I think if they didn't have Europa, I don't think that would be a far-fetched statement. Oh, Europa, yeah. yeah, I don't think that would be a far-fetched statement. Like, and they did well because they played Europa this week. Did they play kids in Europa? They do, didn't they? No. No, no, no. They've been playing players. They played Europa this week, 10,000-mile um, round trip, basically, to wherever the hell it was. Apparently, they've got the nicest airport in the world. Well, those, see those alternative truths there? I don't want to hear that. Apparently, they just I've heard they just land. Apparently. On a road. No, it's gold. Gold runway. Anyway. They keep making these 10,000 mile round trips. It's going to be difficult, but it wasn't difficult this week because they went absolutely mad in the second half. Bro, can I say something? Ramsey's goal, I'm going to say it. Oh, God. I don't think it'll be top this season. No. What? I don't think it'll be top. You don't think it'll be top? I think it'll be goal, of, Anderson the, I think be. It'll be goal of the season. Bro, better, better than Anderson's. Everything about that goal was perfection. The way it started, the way Ramsey flicked it over, then it got pushed again, then Bellerin flicked it, then he, Ramsey's like chested it, headed it, then it's gone hooked to Aubameyang, then he's taking it first yep. time, then he's ended the move with that. It was, it was, yep, good. it was great, beautiful, great. man. It wasn't just that goal. Did you see how many other goals they scored? The Aubameyang one, his first one, where it comes in, the way he's like controlled it, like off the ground, spun, yeah. knocked it in. Lacazette's second one was a mad thing. He's just knocked it. They're going to win mad. the league. No, I don't think they're going to win the league. I'll be honest. I think they're they're going to win, win. But they're definitely, at this point in time, in the hunt for top four, without a shadow of a doubt. Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City are on 20 points, and Arsenal and Spurs are on 18. So do you think Arsenal have kind of done what Antonio Conte did in his first season, where you know they didn't win the first two games, and then they went on to just win the title? That's what you think's happened? Bro, let me be, let me, let me be one hunter. Oh, yeah? Keep it one hunter. I really do believe that teams are going to sleep on Arsenal. And I really do believe that their squad, look at the, the two little players that they've brought in, the little curly-haired one, Sideshow Bob, they're doing well when they come in. Mm. Rob Holding does well when he comes in. They're all doing well. Even the right-back, Bellerin, he's playing well again. So mm. I think, literally, they've got the team, they've got a good squad, and I think people are going to sleep on that, bro. I respect that. And obviously we spoke about Ramsey, he's got to sort out this contract this year. And if he doesn't, where's he going to go? There's loads of clubs he can go to. Where do you think he will go? I'm saying, let's be realistic. Could go Man United. He was already linked with him, I think, last season. I could see him in a Man United side. Would they pay him 350 grand? That's what he wants. I don't know about 350 grand, but I think he'll take at least 200 out of, out of principle for what Arsenal have done. He would say, oh, at least I'll take 200 there. Still more than what he's earning now. Hmm. And probably the reason he wants 350 grand is thinking if he does go, It'll be a free transfer. Yeah, we'll Team get the money on top yeah, there, yeah. Doesn't does have to pay for the transfer fee. Makes sense. But should he ask for that at Arsenal then? I mean, again, personally... I to go and buy a player and give that to them, I Well, suppose. personally, if you ask my opinion, I don't think he deserves it, but you got us deserves to deserve it, which is no as well. So if he says, look, this guy doesn't deserve it, and he's getting 350 grand. I've been here longer than him. I've been a long servant to this club. Why can't I get what he's got? He ain't doing more than me. Is he getting it because he's a name? I think he does. He is, he's getting it because he's a name, Ertzel. All right, Man United Empire on Twitter said, Gary Neville, they quoted him. They, the board, are playing football manager with the biggest club in the world. Stop it. I hope Jose is there next week. I like Jose Mourinho, and it'll be sad if he goes. 
great interview that was. He was so passionate. Um, but you knew he was saying some some stuff. He kept saying, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." <laughs> was he feeling it? Like, was yeah, he, was he really? That's it. Gary, man. I like Gary. Listen, I really like Gary. I think he's getting better looking with age as well. He used to be really ugly. Whoa. He's like a crow. Whoa. Like an old witch. Whoa. Now he looks good. Looking no. really, and I know he knows that as well. So they reported mm -hmm. that Jose Mourinho would be sacked, and that's yep. why Gary Neville did this interview and he got really emotional about it. Um, but he hasn't been sacked. Man United came out and said, nope, we're sticking by our guy. They did the famous comeback, 2-0 yep. down at Old Trafford. 1-3-2. What's your thoughts? Is this... Is this going to be the turning point for them, or was that just a, a, just a one-off escape? Do you think they're going to go back to being bad again? Go back to what Gary Neville said. He gave away a few gems there, which I sort of half knew, but he confirmed them. And that was that the journalists, they wouldn't usually let a story go like that unless they were 100% sure. Yeah. Which made me think, rah. And he said that. He said, like, he, he must know this, yeah? He didn't, he so didn't. this is a fact? Whoa. I'm guessing that United, have, after that, and Gary Neville's probably said that, they've like, and the win, obviously. So you think they backtracked to yes, what they were going to do? I think he was going. So then why is Mourinho still there then? Wouldn't, wouldn't you at principle go, I'm leaving then? You think you can no. just sack me and it gets leaked and then now I'm just going to stay? No, because there's one thing and at United, they were the best at keeping things under wraps. They must have had massive, they were the biggest club in the world. Yeah. And they had the biggest players and these players were doing stuff. Social media wasn't what it is now. Do you know what I mean? If you got it, you'd have to kind of maybe read traditional well, media press, and it didn't... That's traditional media. No, but what I'm saying is things now, it's just so yeah, much easier yeah, yeah. to go if viral problems, and just catch. If these problems were coming out like that, then yeah. But this is this is the press. They've done the same with Van Gaal. They said he'd been mm. sat, the, I think, the night before um, FA Cup final. I don't know, because the main... For me, the main source that I saw, it said Daily Mirror. Not trusting the Red Top newspaper. Oh, even, if, even if it's cool, even if it is the most credible, I'm not trusting it. Yeah, it's like Red Top Milk, isn't it? Oh, so have you heard this? So allegedly, Mourinho asked Pogba what he thought he needed to change at half time, and he said, move me deeper and bring on Fellaini. Do you believe that? Boy, Man United fans, let us know how you're feeling. I mean, I, I, it was kind of divided between the Man United fans I know. Some of them actually wanted them to lose so that Mourinho could get sacked. It's got to that level, it reminds me of an Arsenal fans wanted Wenger to go, but then some of them were obviously relieved because they just want points on the board and they want to try and climb back and not look so bad. Miguel Delaney said, Klopp describes Nations Cup as the most senseless competition in the world of football. Is that the new Europe one that England played against? Spain? Yeah, no. a lot of all the European teams are playing it. Okay. They're playing it. So after Liverpool's draw with City, Jurgen Klopp took aim at the UEFA Nations Cup. Wow. And you saw what he said. I mean, what, what, what do you think? I think, how can a guy be called Delaney and his first name's Miguel? Do you think that's rude of him to say? No, it's honest. The most senseless it competition is, is in weird, the world of football. Right? So you, what, you've, you want to make friendlies, the people that know, the, the thing that people wanted the least is friendlies, international friendlies. Everyone hates their managers do anyway. And you want to make them more competitive. That makes no sense. Straight Klopp. after a World Cup, it makes zero sense. So I, I agree with Klopp, but... Can I ask you something? And I'll ask Klopp this as well. Go on. See football, what is it? Sport. And what is the aim of that sport for to clubs? win. For the clubs? To win. And in turn, then what, if they win? Um, champions. And then from that, they... Do they charge people to go to games? Uh, yeah. So football's all about money, essentially. Okay. It's a business. Football's a sport, but let's be real, it's a business first. It's a business before a sport. Because if it wasn't, then everyone could go matches for free, and we all could take about and do... No, it's about money. Klopp, this is about money, okay? We need to make friendlies more interesting. It's just another revenue for these associations to make more money. So Klopp, obviously, there is sense in it. That, that is the sense of it, to make money. You should know this, mate. Klopp shouldn't, doesn't care about that because he pays those players' wages. He wants them to be... But busted. that's my whole point. He's looking at his angle. My point is, you're not looking at their angle, which is to make money. Your club wants to make money, so your club does that. So it's equally, these football associations in each country, Spain, whatever, need to make their money. So, what? so you want them to just sit around and just let you lot do everything, take all the money, pay the players and do everything. It's business. That's the sense I see in it. It's just my business. Mate, my mate Jesse said, um, it's not about the money. Money, money. 
Before when it was just friendlies, a manager like Klopp could probably ring up Gareth Southgate and say, look Gareth, this player's been playing a lot lately, he's a bit tired, could you maybe give him a rest? Gareth like, all right, cool, it's only San Marino, whatever. Now, Gareth's got to win. But if he don't win against um, Spain, Croatia, he's going to look poo again. No, he's not. He'll never look poo. He took us to a semi-final. That is my he's stepfather not, he's you're not, talking about. I know, there. he's not, and I love him, and I love what he's doing. I love the people he's bringing in. But I'm just saying, there's more pressure on him now. Like, for instance, I would no, love no, no. for him to start Jadon Sancho. But what you're Will doing... he start him? No, because he wants to start with the strongest team. Watch. You never know, he might start him. We'll and what, what I'm going to say is, once again, all you're doing is pandering to what I said. He's thinking about him. He's not thinking about the FA and what other people have got to do. He's just thinking about himself. Oh, my players are dead on their feet. Well, that's your fault. You played them too much. Rotate them more. Oh, UK have said, former Chelsea, Aston Villa and England defender, John Terry. That's an Aston retirement from professional football. What a player. CFC, AVFC. Why did they put the AVFC in there? Seriously, bro. Who did he play for? I don't care. Don't do that, man. It's all nah. about Chelsea. Big up JT, bro. No, I'm going to say... Definitely one of the a footballer. One of the best defenders we've probably seen in the Premier League ever. Yeah. Um, obviously one of Chelsea's greatest players. Yep. Yeah. How many do he won like 15 trophies while he was there? And whatever you think of him as a person, even if you don't know him, whatever, whatever, there's just no denying what he was. He's a he's a great, great guy, man. Great guy. Great guy. <laughs> Uh, Joe Arms was funny though. Big up Dennis Wise, my guy Dennis Wise, man. Love him. Obviously, former Chelsea captain as well. He sent a nice little thing for John Terry as well. He's like, he said, the greatest captain ever, John Terry. I was thinking, Dennis, you could put yourself in there, mate. That's not right. No, no, JT was the greatest captain for Chelsea. Yeah, but Dennis taught him everything he knows. Bruv, come on, man. Listen, he done what he done to, to Anton Ferdinand. I ain't letting that go, bruv. And, and Bridgie. Poor little Bridgie. After know, he done you what, know what he done to Bridgie, he had to start doing boxing. Bridgie started boxing after that. <laughs> he did. He did. Bridgie started. He's like, know, this, one, the next guy ain't taking my new wife. That's what Bridgie was saying. But, um, bro, yeah, yeah, that's all I think about with JT. Great defender, great on the ball. We had this argument the other week about him or Rio on the ball. Yeah. I love John Terry. I'm never going to diss him as a football player. But um, some of his actions off the pitch for me is just like, man, I don't care. Yeah. The like, Anton Ferdinand one was on the pitch. That's the maddest thing. Oh, yeah. But because um, usually when it's off the pitch, I don't care. But when it's happened on the pitch, then I'm like, bro, you're mixing it with the sport now. And But one of my main memories of John Terry, I don't know why, it always sticks out in my head. And I don't know if it was for England or if it was for Chelsea. But I remember there was a time when someone tried kicking the ball and he just used his head to kind of like block it. Do you remember that? He was like planking sideways and he like used his head. And this one, and I mean, that just described John Terry. This is a man that would throw yeah. his body on the line to protect Petr Cech. I don't know why I chose Petr Cech. I don't know. He was there for a long time. But he was always there and, and yeah, man, I can see why they love him over there. JT. Um, the game won't miss you. Sky Sports News have said, breaking Brighton defender Lewis Dunk has been called up to the England squad as a replacement for the injured James Tarkowski. Oh my God. Um, why did you say my God? Let me know your thoughts. Let's talk about it. I just thought he was even playing that good. Lewis Dunk's decent, man. No, he's a good guy. We, we yeah. met Lewis, he's a good guy. I'm just saying, like, wow, man. I mean, how many, have we got a lot of centre-halves? Like, are I we... want to be seeing him play, like, last year, year before. Like, Harry Maguire, you saw it. You, it was evident that he deserved this England spot. Uh, attacking players are different. Attacking players, you can score a few goals and you're on form, and I don't mind attacking players getting the chance. But defender, you got to be sure, because you can bring a defender in and you can get killed if you're not right. You're bringing him in, whether he plays or not against Spain and Croatia, bro. Yeah. Jeez. He's Johnny, been, Johnny been, might run wind around him. He's been, <laughs> Johnny, he's been pretty consistent though. I need to watch him more then. I need to watch him more. He's been, pretty, he's been playing every week, you know. But he joins Jaden Sancho. Yes. Mason Mount. Yes. Two of our guys. Yes. James Madison. Yes. Nathaniel Chalaba. Yes. Shout, shout out Nat Chalaba. And uh, Harry Winks, another one of our guys. There's a few of our boys in there, man. It seems to me that Southgate is like, it's like he's got people in his mind that he wants to try out. Whether they've been playing or not, like he's like, you know what, I'll next season. Like, it's like he, he planned from ahead. Well, this is the thing. Like, Chalaba hasn't really been playing, has he? Winks hasn't played too much. Well, before we, before, well, I, before we went off to the World Cup, Mason Mount and Chala both tra trained with the senior mm -hmm. squad. Must have done well so he, yeah, they, they must have impressed him. But not just that, you've got to remember, he was the under-21s coach. So he's yes, grown yes, up yes, with yes. a lot of these guys. 
He knows their potential. He has faith in a lot of them. Do you know what I mean? He's seen them perform in tournaments before. He could easily get maybe like bigger characters or bigger players. But sometimes it's about who's going to listen to you, listen to your instructions, who's reliable, but still has the ability to carry out these instructions yeah. as well. And I feel like he knows a lot of these young players very well. And I think it's, you know, we have this kind of double-edged sword where people go, oh, we're not giving young talent enough opportunity. Because, you know, this is year of the youngster here on JD Football. But in the same breath, people go, oh, but if you give them youngers that, then you're just, you're kind of diminishing the honour of playing for England. And it's just like, bro, let's just trust our managers. Gareth got us to a semi-final. Put people in the team that are playing well. But what needs to happen is the youngsters that we're talking about, the ones that won the under-20s, they need to be playing in the teams in England. Mm. And they're not. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So mm. if they was to be playing in the teams in England, then they would get into the England squad because they'd be the best English players. Because yeah. they're more talented than the current players that are there. You know what I mean? If you go into the, the young centre-halves, we've got so many young, good centre-halves. Reese Oxford. Yep. These guys ain't close to the England team because they're not close to their first teams. Mm. So these people like Dunk, which are like Lewis Dunk, they wouldn't be getting a look in if our good English youngsters were getting played in their um, league teams. I hear you. Club teams. Big up Lewis Dunk though, yeah, man. Yeah. Obviously a massive honour for James you. James Madison as well. Yeah, there's, there's a few Bad players in there. Player. Done your thing, man. All right, so you know what time of the show Hamilton is. Hamilton B. All I want is for you to challenge me. Bum, 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 Craig, yeah. you will make my dreams come true. Dun, dun, dun. Bum, 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 bum. Dun, 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 dun. Forever I've wanted a challenge. I can go on if you want. Nah, it was, it was cool. Was that an original? Yeah, original. Done your thing still. Thank you. Like that, Thank straight you. off the cuff, all yes. right? It's coming with the original ones. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Challenge time this week. John Terry has retired from football and he has done so as the all-time highest scoring Premier League yeah, defender. Good. 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 A whopping 41 goals. That is ridiculous. To honour JT Wait, today. 20 years. <laughs> You're a hater. <laughs> We're going to be challenged on the highest scoring defenders in the Premier League, in the history of the Premier League, by being given the clubs they've scored for and their nationality. Bro, well, I got this. I have got this one. You was a, you was a, you was, you was a defender, so <laughs> exactly. uh, really high scoring really? one as well. Scored nine. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Damn it! I'm gonna ask you first. Go on. What does that even mean? Music. Oh. All right, Steve-O, yes. which Irish defender scored 28 goals for Leeds, Sunderland, and Reading? Ian Ten. Hart. I'm cruising this one. It's real quick. Would you know it like that? Yeah, yeah, I know them all. Which? English defender scored 32 goals for Wigan and Everton. Three. Wigan? Two. One. Jagielka? Nope. Nope. Leighton. A Dukin! Baines. All right. Which English defender scored 27 goals for Aston Villa, Bolton and Chelsea? Cahill! Great. Yes. Which England defender scored 23 goals for Everton, Manchester City and Aston Villa? Ten. Jolien Lescott. Two on to you. All right. Which Norwegian defender scored 18 goals for Nottingham Forest, Leeds and Man City? 10, 9, 8, Alfie 7, 6. Roy Keane doesn't like him. Why? Boom. Why not? Because Roy Keane tried to break his leg. He in fact did break his knee, end his career. Craig. Yes. Which Irish defender scored 18 goals for Manchester United and Wolves? 3, 2, 1. Owen. Yeah, I had no idea. All right, let's do the last one. You've won it. You've won it 3-1. Which English defender scored 17 goals for Sheffield United and Everton? For the perfect. Jackie Oka. Hadouken. All right, let's get one for the tab then. So Steve has won that clean, perfect sweep. You did your thing. Hadouken. But for the tab then, of the 50 highest scoring Premier League defenders, seven played for Arsenal. Name them. That's a lot. Yeah, because last week's was easy. That's a lot. Seven of them played for Arsenal. Can you name seven? And it was Arsenal's week, so, you know, makes sense. Let us know in the comments below. Guys, that is it. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe. Drop the video like if you enjoyed it. Hit the notification button so you know when the videos come out. Why go into your subscription wow. box and look for them wow. when you could just hit the notification button? Simple. And, uh... Oh, yeah, oh. What? No. What? 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 What
There's no rules. Right, later guys. Bam, bam, bam. Low look. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs>